highlighting some of my favorite players of the past. This particular week, I'm highlighting no other than the late, great Reggie White. Reggie was one of my favorite players for a number of reasons. Largely because John LeMadden would spend a number of time highlighting Reggie on the football field, talking about how he was beating the double team and the triple team with these, and how the offensive coordinator might need to try something new. Started out at the state of Tennessee, where he would just be a dominant football player from the get-go. In high school, he was named Mr. Tennessee and would be recruited by everybody. But it would be the University of Tennessee volunteers that would land their men. While at the University of Tennessee, though, let's talk about some of the things he was able to accomplish. He had over 290 tackles, 32 sacks, was named Consensus All-American. He was the SEC Player of the Year and also was a Lombardi Award finalist. All these accolades, he still found time to be ordained a minister. Now, funny tidbit about this. Reggie's mom did not want him to play football. She actually wanted her son to be a minister. So he took it upon himself to go and get ordained and, and teach the gospel on Sundays after his games on Saturday. Not bad, Pretty, quite impressive for a young man at that age. Reggie's talent would not only be sought after by the National Football League, but at this time in 1983, when he was going into the draft, there was a new league in town that was trying to give NFL some competition. The season premiere of the United States Football League. They had their first territorial draft. They had a team down in Memphis, and they knew the men that they wanted to select and be the future of their franchise. I tell you one thing, I'm the greatest in the world. I tell you, Memphis Showboats, we world champions. We're going to win a championship. We're going for it all. We're going for it all. Reggie would take off this Memphis and have a complete dominant year, first year out the gate. In two seasons with the USFL, he would have over 23 sacks, a safety, and a touchdown uh, return off a of fumble. But after the two years in the USFL, the league would find fall on hard times and implode. Philadelphia Eagles would take advantage of this opportunity and buy his rights. His first year though in Philadelphia, he would not look back. He would continue his success from the USFL to the National Football League, where he would have 13 sacks and be named Defensive Rookie Player of the Year. In the next four years in Philadelphia, his game will only get better and he will only rise to the occasion year after year. Being named to all pro teams, pro bowl appearances, as well as being named to NFL Defensive Player of the Year. All in all, after eight years in Philadelphia, he had a hell of a run. Free agency is largely due to this man right here. Myself and the many others owe him a great deal of gratitude. At one point in time, you couldn't just shop your talents around the league to the open market. But when Reggie White opened the door for us, he opened the door for himself. On record, Reggie said that Green Bay Packer was not someone he thought he would end up. And once he took a trip there, he realized how passionate the fans were, how rich the culture of football was within the organization. And this quarterback that had a hell of an arm, he couldn't resist. He took his football times to Green Bay whereas the success he had collegially, professionally, in other areas will continue. In his six years in Green Bay, he would have over 68 sacks. He would have one interception and eight fumble recoveries. He named six Pro Bowls and yes, another defensive player of the year. But probably the biggest thing that he was able to accomplish was winning the Super Bowl. Reggie retired from the National Football League and NFL sack leader 198. It's an asterisk next to that, not for a bad reason, because some people would like to think, what if he had those 23 others that he added from the USFL? Just maybe Bruce Smith would not be the all-time sack leader, but we'll never know. He would end up losing his life far too soon. He was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the class of 2006. One of my favorite players of all time, Reggie White, the Minister of Defense, who seemed to always have a smile on his face, Raise hell in the backfield, but still had a good word to give you at the end of the day. It's not much you can say bad about a man like that. When you look back and see how short his life was, it seemed like he got the most out of it. But Reggie found his purpose two times over at the same time length. He was a hell of a defensive player and he was a heck of a minister. Somebody that lived life with passion. And although he's gone too soon, he reminds us all to live out our days to be the best, dominate, but also be a blessing at the end of the day.